Hello guys and welcome to the first CSM podcast show. This is episode one and I am Andres Bear in 11th grade and I am the CSM web producer. Hi, I'm Camilla Villarreal. I'm in 10th grade and I'm a staff writer. Uh, I'm Kelly Way. I am in 12th grade and I'm the editor-in-chief. And today we will be focusing on interviewing Pramika. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Pramika. I'm in 10th grade and I'm the copy editor. All right, guys. And just so you all know, this is going to be a weekly hybrid podcast that incorporates elements of interview and conversation. Also, we have rotating hosts. So let's start off with our first segment for the show titled Headline Rundown. And our first story comes from Christine Z. She is our executive news editor, and she wrote an article about the registration process for the upcoming year titled Registration Process for 2019-20 School Year Underwear. Prepare students for class choices. Our second story comes from Neha D a staff writer who wrote an article about awareness in 2019 titled, Let's Be More Aware in 2019. So a little excerpt from Neha's article that I want to showcase is, she wrote in her words, so in 2019, we must actively strive to be more aware. We can take tiny steps in the right direction simply by listening and believing. We can make a difference only by passing on a message and giving our endorsement or lack thereof. All right, so not to get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> this is the CSM interview segment of our show, and we will be interviewing Pramika K, our guest. So I think um, we should definitely start with a thought process of um, the story because it's, it's really powerful and um, and I, for one, really connected with it. So um, when you were first brainstorming the idea for this story, um, how did you kind of organize your thoughts? Um, well, I was talking to my friend from my old school, and I just moved here sophomore year. But when I was um, at my old high school for my freshman year, most of my friends were Asian. And um, I just felt like a lot of them had like nearly perfect grades and stuff. And I kind of felt the pressure to measure up to that. And I was talking to my sister about that, and I just realized that like there shouldn't be a pressure to there should be a pressure to reach a certain academic standard just for just because you're a certain race. And um, I don't know. I just realized that I didn't think it should be assumed that all Asians have this natural genius like academically yeah and I think it was really um cool that you kind of highlighted that because I think a lot of the times um you know how Asian people tend to be highlighted as like model minorities Mm -hmm. um because there aren't necessarily negative connotations to being Asian compared to being like African-American or Hispanic right now anyway um so and I think a lot of the times that leads to people kind of overlooking the struggles that Asian Americans have here um, and and um, I think it's really important to kind of highlight that um, even though the stereotype that might be considered good you know we're oh we're so called smart mm-hmm. um, it can be harmful too so definitely do you think that you're giving them a voice just people who feel the way that you do um, yeah I think that's what made it get a lot of the popularity that it did because I know that most of the people who were kind of commenting on it were Asians themselves and were saying that they could relate to the story I, I think that they don't want to be locked down to such a stereotype, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of um, how the story has gotten so popular, um, I think it, we should definitely highlight the fact that it was um, it, it was published, right, in the Dallas Morning News. Uh, so that's yeah. really awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty great. Um, and I just know, like, even on um, Capo Student Media, if you just look at the views in the comments, I think it's really sparked meaningful discussion. Um, I just want to ask, because I'm in the middle of writing a story that I personally love. Did you, number one, love writing it? And did that inspire more love for other stories? Did you not want to write a story that you didn't love anymore? Um, I actually did not like the story when I was first writing it. Um, I procrastinated it, and then I (laughs) felt like, I don't know, I just felt like it wasn't good I felt like it wasn't my best writing and I I don't know why but as I was writing it I just felt like I was being over dramatic or 
but I didn't have like the right to complain about this so I didn't want to look at the story anymore so I just turned it in without like trying to improve it to my best so yeah I was actually kind of disappointed in it oh my god <laughs> well I mean I think that's fair too because um honestly like uh, I feel like this is something that's not talked about a lot precisely for that reason that mm -hmm. if you start talking about it at some point you kind of feel like why am I even talking about it it should be a good thing um, it's hard to like kind of overcome that mindset and that mentality, I think. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point where you stopped and said, like, am I going too far? You know, as journalists, sometimes we think that, oh, if I, if I say this, it could possibly harm someone or hurt their feelings. Um, I did feel like some people might take it the wrong way and think that, like, I was saying that Asians weren't as capable as they, like, or stereotyped mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. And I got a few comments saying that, but that's not what I was saying. I was just saying that even if you are capable, it doesn't mean that like everyone is automatically like an academic genius. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. And how have your friends and family reacted to your article in general? Um, a lot of my friends who are Indian especially liked it and like Asian. My parents were pretty proud that it got into the Dallas Morning News and... Yeah. My, since I have a lot of Indian family, they also like related to it. And how does that work? Did they like email you and said, hey, we love your story, let it be in our like news, or, or what happened with that? Um, basically, someone who Mr. Wofford knows like emailed me and Mr. Wofford saying that there's like this opportunity in the Dallas Morning News to submit your like columns. It's called the Dallas Viewpoints column. And so I just submitted it, and then they emailed me back like a couple of days later saying they would publish it that week. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you plan on, on writing stories similar to this in the future? Um, I don't really want to write any more stories like based off the Asian stereotype thing, mm -hmm. because I just feel like that would be milking the issue. Mm -hmm. But I do really like, like writing personal columns in general. Right, peeling back many layers with them. All right, guys, so this is a little quote from Pramika's story, and I'd like her to read it to us. Um, boys are not always messy and loud. Girls are not always obsessed with their appearance, and Asians are not always either lazy geniuses or study addicts. We are not clones of each other. We are humans. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Make sure to check out Pramika, Ending Smart Asian Stereotypes on CSM. Thank you, Pramika. All right, guys, so thank you for joining us in our first episode of the CSM podcast. The name is subject to change. <laughs> and please tune in next Thursday for episode two.